the top ten in the first five rows. Uh, row six is Ricky McIntosh and Riley Blakemore. Ashton Horsepool and Ella Dixon are next. Then we've got Daniel Barton, Jack Wikes, Tyler Banks, Oliver Ratton, Luke Jardine, Finley Thursfield, Dino Rowlands, the first of the novices. 22nd is Otto Amy, Noah Clark, Jane Prakash, Sophie Morris, Jacob Letherby. In 27th, Jaden Patel Scott. We had a lovely chat with the novice driver, Jaden Patel Scott, who's absolutely loving his racing here this weekend in the kart championship. Freddie Budd is next up in 28th. Then we've got Ollie Knox and then a plethora of novice drivers rounding off the 32 kart field. James Pearson, Jerry and Reggie Duffersey. So what are the thoughts you had? <laughs> I forgot now. There you go. So it obviously wasn't that important. Um, <laughs> usually in Honda Cadets, Nick, uh, who, by the way, are about to have a standing start, if you're wondering what's happening, that red flag just means that the grid will be stopped and will be a light-controlled uh, operation. You've lost a couple again, I'm afraid. I'm yeah, around. there's been a few spinners. Mm. But what I was about to say, Nick, yesterday the Honda Cadets gave us, as usual, some of the best racing you'll ever see anywhere in the world. Trains of carts, 15, 20, 30 cart trains, line astern, bumper to bumper. They will continue round by like a high-speed train, and then you'll see them breaking formation and trying to overtake one another. What have I said? You said high speed without the following sentence normally. High speed? <laughs> yes. Actually, if anything epitomises the term high speed game of chess, it's the waiting game played by the Honda Cadet field. They just sit there and they wait for their moment and take it very cautiously and circumspect. And we will see exactly how Honda Cadets are about to race off and are in the wet. I suspect they're going to be a little bit more spaced out with the cart sliding around underneath the drivers. It's a little bit harder to steer in contact in the same way that they do. I'm pretty sure they're going to prove me to be a bit of a fibber, but we'll see. We're about to go and get on with this race. The grid is being cleared. I think we've got the cleared grid sign up. We have indeed. The red lights go out. And we are racing, and it's Ryan White who gets the traction down. But from the second row, it looks like Kevin Ivanov. Or is it Ralphie Branscombe that goes through? All the way around the outside. Now, talking about local knowledge once again, the number 50 of Kevin Ivanov slotting into second ahead of his zip cart teammate. But then Loveridge coming back at him. And if you looked away and then looked up, it's still Loveridge in second. Carts bounding over the curbing there as they come out of the dog leg. Oh, <laughs> The number 50 of Ivanov there absolutely fired himself out of a cannon through St. John's. Uh, local knowledge coming into play again, I think, in this one. As Ryan White knows this place like the back of his hand. He's raced here many, many times. And already showing everybody where the grip is. Into the chicane for the first time. Just to remind everybody, these heats are eight minutes and one lap. Eight minutes and one lap are the duration of all of our heats, unless we tell you otherwise. And Ryan White has checked out. He's only at the horseshoe for the first time. And already he's got about, what, two seconds on the rest of the field. And that's what a puddle does for the number 50, Kevin Ivanov, from third place. He just hooked his wheel too far to the inside. And if anything, he may have been, unavoid he may have been unable to avoid that with a cart on his right-hand side coming out of the, the Gasworks hairpin. So across the line for the first time, then Ryan White leads. Got 1.7 seconds on second place. Archie Loveridge, Ronnie Smart it is. Now up to third. Luke McGall, fourth. Ralphie Branscombe on the all plate, fifth. Ashton Horspill, sixth. Riley Blakemore, Ed Spin, Jack Wikes and Kevin Ivanov recovering and rounding off the top ten. Through St. John's then. And as I thought, things beginning to space out. Avoiding the puddles as best you can. Carts slipping and sliding. See the cart, the drivers. What you don't see in the dry is the amount of steering wheel movement as we as we do in the wet. The drivers applying the steering left and right, just finding the feeling the grip from those front tires. That's Ryan White in the foreground, and that's how heavy the rain is. Our lens beginning to. Maybe have to have somebody have a trip out there and give that a wipe later on, Nick, when it gets really bad. But uh, we'll see how it goes for now. Rooster tails of water coming from the track surface, just showing us how wet this is. Loveridge through in second. That's Ronnie Smart catching him a little bit there. 
maybe lulling us into a bit of a sense of security there. Ronnie Smart, who's with Project One, chasing down the Zip Factory driver. Project One, of course, leading the race in the form of Ryan White as well. So the Project One team sharing information regarding setup, no question, because these carts are very, very quick out there. However, Zip Cart know what they're doing. And right now, Archie Loveridge is their lead driver in this Honda Cadet race so far. And he's in second place. Yep. Coming in there. Through now. The white and multicolored cart. Oh, we've got a red flag, Nick. Smart. Oh, red flag. We've got Why a red flag. Then? What's caused the red flag? We've got a red flag situation. We've got the carts being um, directed into the park fermate. Um, not quite sure what the stoppage is about, but uh, uh, there's a well. There we is get a car off on the top left. When we get some information, we'll uh, we were just presuming yeah. that that is the situation that necessitates calling a halt to that. So, with um, I think we're just underneath three minutes of racing there. That exactly on three minutes when the clock was stopped. Two minutes fifty-seven to be totally precise. So whether or not we will rerun this superheat, Nick, I'm not sure Only three what minutes will happen. Done. Not, not sure. And they are running quite a tight... Well, they, they, they say it's a tight schedule. I think they're trying to get away. So they probably will drift it a little bit towards the end. So next out will be the C50 Cormas, but we've got a bit of a... Well, we've got a bit of time. So there's, there's, there's something we need to talk about, which we actually do need to talk about and, and refresh also on the Mighty E's. We have misspoken about the Mighty E's. The Mighty E's. Mighty E's. And, it's, and um, Johnny Simpson has been in contact with us because I think we took what was a conversation we had about what could potentially happen and confuse it what actually happened. Right, okay. Because um, we said that in the wet, you could change the power delivery. Well, I was, just, the power I was just wondering yeah. if, if that's what you do. Unfortunately, some people have thought we said that's, like what, that's what had happened. All right, no. And uh, Johnny wanted to say, no, 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 no. The units have been set and locked since they left Northern Ireland and they've not been changed because of wet weather or anything else or track oh, conditions. It's right. a, it's a, it, they've been nailed down. So I apologise for any confusion we may have caused to anyone listening. It was us thinking about it. And we did have a conversation about when well, you could do that, couldn't you? And of course you could do that, well, but you don't do that. So. Well, yeah, that, that was a question I was asking. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. Can, can you change the setup for the wet yeah. and reduce the amount of power coming, going to the back wheels? And which could, is something but that, they don't. But they don't, right. And that's why I was shouting out to Johnny, who's answered those questions. He has. But well, unfortunately, apparently, a couple of the parents have got a little bit irate, thinking they've had their engines turned down. Uh, but they haven't. They're all the same. All right. So everybody in the Mighty Camp, in the Mighty Camp, you're all the same. You're all the same. And the same as you were yesterday morning and Friday morning and Thursday morning. I understand, I understand why these things... It just shows, Nick, you should never listen to what the commentators are saying. We're just speculating I, on rumour and literally, speculation. We've got, we've got hours to fill. Yeah. We got, so who else can we upset? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we will repeat that, actually, that, 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 that message also for the next Mighty E Heap. I just thought it was probably easy to get it out now. Um, let's suppose it's not the first time we've been taken to task. <laughs> um, can Ash hear us, by the way? Can Ash hear us? Yes. He's on the camera, isn't he? I know. He's, yeah. All right. I, I just need to know his lunch order. So oh, can you, right. Can you put it on the group? Yeah. Then? Can you put your lunch order? Can, can Ash, can you put your lunch order onto the WhatsApp chat? Um, That's a little bit of an in-house uh, catering going on there. Um, good luck to Brady, Brady Aitken, says uh, Dan ST 32 from Passion Karting. Right. I'm going to move on to Comas now, Nick. And right. talk about that. Before we do, though, this lull in the proceedings gives us an opportunity to talk about the calendar. Um, so we're here at Warden Law, just on the south edge of Sunderland City, on the site of the 10,000-year-old monolithic uh, sacred mound just outside the front gates. Uh, people have been racing here for 10,000 years. I've heard that, yes. yes. Started off with, what, what were you read? Mammoths, I suppose? Mammoth racing? Possibly. Uh, well, running away from the same tooth tigers. So the we've... We, seals, <laughs> penguins. It's quite cold up here. It wasn't the Ice Age. Uh, so we've had, uh, round one took place at Wilton Mill. Round two, we went off to North Wales and Glanigore. Uh, here we are at round three. Round four, we have to wait a little bit for, towards the end of June at Rara in Cumbria. We basically go from the northeast coast across to the west and on the edge of the Lake District. It's a great drive up to Rara from anywhere, wherever you're coming from. Uh, Rara, just on the edge of the Lake District. Absolutely wonderful place to be in the world wonderful place to go racing did i mention nick that 
Rara is the truck that our first rooster cart had. No, really? Yeah, no, yeah. no it's yeah, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just, just a bit of update. The, uh, the driver who's being looked at and uh, caused the red flag is absolutely fine, thanks. Uh, I think a lot of times, uh, the guys had a little bit of knock. They say, stay in the cart. Let's have a look. Let's make sure uh, both the cart and the driver are fine. So that's excellent news. Now, I assume they're either going to rerun that now, though actually all the, all the carts are leaving part firm. I think that's it. I think that's going to be no, called after that, two minutes. Yeah, that'll be called after two and a half minutes, two, no, almost three minutes. Um, let me quickly round off the calendar for this year. Um, so from Rara in, at the end of June, we go to mid-July. Actually, that's not far away. So weekend of the 22nd, 23rd of June for Rara, and then the weekend of the 13th and 14th of July across to Lincolnshire for Fullbeck, that uh, old-school airfield circuit at I better, Fullbeck. St- I better start driving up the driveway now. Yeah, you, you might have to do that, Nick. Um, so everything concluded by round five um, in July... That's not racing.